If you or someone in your family is allergic to animals, but you dearly love to have a dog, your search has no doubt brought you to Golden Doodles. You've heard they're hypoallergenic, you've spoken to others and they said their dog doesn't trigger their allergies. Excellent! And massive bonus, these dogs are adorable. So, you're set. Well, perhaps. If dog allergies are a serious issue for you, then this video is for you. Before you commit to getting a Golden Doodle puppy or adult, there are a few things you need to know. And definitely stick around to the end for what you may possibly find to be some surprising information. Hello, I'm Joanna, here is Sophie, and this is my Golden Doodle Diary. If you're fascinated by this breed too, consider subscribing. It makes a big difference to this channel. Now, let's get into today's video. From the outset, it's important to know that no matter what breed, all dogs produce allergens to some degree. But there are dogs which are low allergenic or hypoallergenic. The very word hypoallergenic means below average or slightly allergenic, leading to fewer allergic reactions. Now when you look at Golden Doodles as a breed, there are lots of variations to the way they come out. Things like colours, sizes and coats. But what's not visually apparent is how they differ to each other in the degree to which they are hypoallergenic. Remember that by definition, Golden Doodles are a cross between a hypoallergenic breed, the Poodle, and the Golden Retriever, which, beloved as it is, is not in itself a hypoallergenic breed. Now, although the intention of breeding a mix of these two is to get hypoallergenic coats, genes aren't necessarily that obedient about giving the resulting Golden Doodle pups only the poodly, low allergen coats. Now don't get me wrong because many Golden Doodles do have hypoallergenic coats. What needs to be understood is that it isn't always the case. Another important thing to recognise is that just because a dog doesn't shed its coat, it isn't automatically hypoallergenic. There is a tendency for low to non-shedding dogs to be less allergenic, but that's not the entire picture. The truth is a major dog allergen source is a protein in the dog's saliva, as well as this dander which is made from flakes of skin also contains allergens. When you have allergies to animals, these are some of the symptoms. Skin irritations, runny noses, swollen or watery eyes, wheezing, shortness of breath, and even asthma. The degree to which people are affected by dog allergens can vary anywhere from mild to severe. So the same dog that causes no reaction in one person may trigger a reaction in someone else. There's no question that human allergies to dogs can be a serious issue. Whether or not you or someone from your household is allergic to a dog can make or break your ability to have a dog at all. Now, does this mean you shouldn't get a golden doodle? No, that's not what I'm saying. But there are two important things you could do to ensure you're making the right decision about adopting a dog. Firstly, communicate with the breeder right from the start about your allergy concerns. An experienced breeder should have a better idea which of his or her dogs have hypoallergenic coats. They will work with you and make sure there is a good match. Now, many people want to find out what generation of Golden Doodle is best when it comes to being low allergenic. But even if both dog parents are low allergy dogs, that doesn't mean that the puppies will necessarily have a similar allergen profile. I'll give you an example. Here is the dashing Asher. He is a beautiful F1 Golden Doodle with a hypoallergenic coat. By the way, if you don't already know, F1 is a first crossing between a purebred Golden Retriever and a purebred Poodle. So Asher had a 50% chance of having his low allergenic coat from the poodle side, and that's what he ended up with. But what happened when Asher was mated with Gypsy, who is also an F1 Golden Doodle with a hypoallergenic coat? They became parents to this gorgeous boy, Leo. 
That makes Leo an F2 golden doodle, the result of an F1 golden doodle bred with another F1 golden doodle. However, despite what you may expect, Leo's coat does produce dander and is relatively more allergenic than Ash's. And here's another kicker. Some of Leo's full brothers and sisters don't have dander. Luckily, Leo's owner doesn't have any dog allergies. But this does illustrate that you can't presume anything about a dog's allergy profile just by knowing what generation he or she is, whether or not the parents have low allergy coats, and even whether or not its siblings have hypoallergenic coats. This is why the second important thing to do before adopting a dog is to spend time with the specific dog you'd like to adopt before committing to it. Spend an extended amount of time, just you and the pup or dog, away from other dogs. The sooner you know if you have a reaction or the extent of that reaction, the better. So you can make an informed decision about whether or not to adopt. What that may mean is buying your dog locally rather than having it flown in or driven in from far away after you've already purchased it. The reason for doing all this rather than getting the pup or dog and seeing how you go is simply this, to avoid heartbreak. Once the puppy or dog is in your home and you and your family open your heart to it and you become completely charmed by it, then you'll know that puppy love is a real, actual thing. Not similar to love, but actual love. Although it doesn't happen often, the times I've heard of people having to return or rehome their golden doodle because they find they are allergic to it after all is always difficult. That's why I hope these extra steps may be helpful to you when making your decision. Now I'd like to introduce you to two gorgeous and extremely loved dogs. This is Jarvis. And this is Smithy. They are both definitely hypoallergenic dogs. People often ask their owners where they can get golden doodles just like them, but the answer is they can't. That's because you may be surprised to know neither of them are golden doodles. Both are standard poodles whose owners have chosen to keep them in a doodle style teddy bear look coat. So if you love the doodle look and allergies are a big issue for you, Perhaps a pure poodle whose coat is kept doodly may be an option for you to consider. And just for fun and to show you how much a hairstyle influences the look of these dogs, this is the lovely Hazel. Hazel is, in fact, a golden doodle, going undercover to look very convincingly like a poodle because of how she's been clipped. Likewise, Joe is a golden doodle, a mini golden doodle, who does a pretty adorable and convincing poodle impression. All right, let me indulge this line of thought just one more time. A quick little quiz for you. This is Theodore. My question is golden doodle or poodle? Theodore is actually a golden doodle. So now you see how blurry the lines between breeds can be. So there you go, golden doodles, poodles, doodles. I wish you the best in making your choice. Now, if you'd like to find out more about the seven great habits to have as a golden doodle or poodle owner, I made a video about it. You can check it out right here. Thanks for your company today and see you again later.